Amen. Amen. How many are excited about being in the house of the Lord today? Amen. How many are excited about being in the house of the Lord again? Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. It is good to be here. Good to see everybody smiling faces. Okay. And uh, then we'll go from there. Let us pray. Father God in heaven, we're so thankful, oh God, that you've privileged us one more time to be in your house. God, to come and to worship you in spirit and in truth. Father, we ask, oh God, that your spirit abide, that, Lord, everything be done according to your will, that you may receive honor and glory and praise in this house. Father, you see this congregation, Lord, you know the needs that are here. Father, there are needs from healing to deliverance. But God, we know that we're serving a God who is able. And Father, I ask you right now that you would be with us. Bless our pastor today. Give him of your strength, anointing. Lord, let him have your blessing upon him, O God. And bless the reading of your word today that it might touch our hearts. And Lord, move us towards you. And Father, we'll bless you right now in Jesus' loving and holy name. Bless in every part of this service. Bless our song director, our, our musicians, Lord. Bless all of us that are singing. Let it be done to your glory. And God will praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Stand as we tell the Lord how blessed we are today. <clears throat>
Sunday, if you want to participate in the youth fundraiser, we are leaving on Friday. Pray for us. And um, we'll be coming back on Monday. So the envelopes are still over here. If you're willing to donate and help us out, we would appreciate it. Let's pray for it all. Heavenly Father, we really love you for all giving to the offering today and giving it to our kingdom and nursing to our, in Jesus' name.
They jumped the gun and they actually dropped their offering over there a little bit earlier, but that's okay. They got a heart big as watermelons. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we're just so humbled by the opportunity to come back in your house, Lord, and worship you in spirit and in truth, Lord. We thank you for the opportunity to give back into your kingdom, Lord. We ask that you take, receive, and multiply these tithes and offerings for thy kingdom. We ask that you bless the giver they purposed in their heart, Lord. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 <laughs>
Father, we're grateful this morning to be able to come freely to your house and worship. Freely to come to the front and pray. God, I thank you for people that can trust you. And I thank you, Father, for people that can come and pray with one another. That care enough about their brother and sisters to know that they have a situation in their life that needs help. And we're going to come pray with them. We're going to support them. But God, I thank you most of all because you're the God that heals us. You're the one that gives us strength. You're the one that guides the things in our lives. And we thank you for that this morning. And we tell you, we sure do love you. And God, this morning we're going to pray for you to bring forth a word that can help each one of us to understand you better. To look at our situation in life and see what we need to do with it. Thank you for challenges that wake us, God. So today we bless you and tell you thank you for all you've done. In Jesus' name, amen. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that's within me. Bless his holy name. And that's what we want to do today. Bless him. And as we bless him, it reflects off of him and comes right back to us. Jesus loves us. You know that. Amen. Amen. I want to ask you this morning as we begin that you be much in prayer for the Smith family that lost their father and husband this week in a tragic fire accident, fire truck accident. Uh, the visitation will be tomorrow and the funeral will be Monday. No, visitation today and the funeral tomorrow. Rob is part of that group and he's lost a friend and a companion. I ask you to pray for him, for all of our Firemen, emergency personnel, it's a sad time, and you just pray for them. In fact, we're going to pray now. Father, we thank you because we know that you guide all things. But today we do pray for this family, asking for your anointing to be upon them and your compassion asking you, God, to guide as they go through the next two days. I pray for all of our firefighters and those that were close, that you be with them and help them to be strong. Comfort them, God, and let them know that somebody's praying for them and holding them up. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Open your Bible to the book of Jonah.
for the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be talking to you about attention getting moments, special godly moments that come to all of us. And we're going to look at some of those and as examples in the Bible, and we're going to see how God used those to affect people in their lives. And while we're doing that, we want to look at ourselves and ask the, the question, when, do, what, when was my last attention-getting moment? A special godly moment. And why did I have it? What was the purpose of it? And we think so much about it being nothing but simply God blessing us. But I'll show you that's not the case. We're going to begin reading this morning from our book. If you have your book, open it up this morning to the page 133, 132, page 132. It says, God is always good to us even in our times of rebellion. He comes to us in love, showing us the error of our ways. And he offers repentance and forgiveness. If, and there you are to circle that if, if we return, all is well. But if, and you circle that one, if we reject, then destruction awaits for us. Our prayer is, Father, help me if I get lost. I desire to obey your word, for it is life or death. There are times that I do stray. Arrogance, pride, and selfishness are constantly trying to lure me away. If, and you circle that one, if I am strong in my commitment, I will resist and stand firmly. But if, and you circle that one, I am weak and careless, I will turn and I will follow after sin. Life is short and it's getting shorter. Judgment starts in the house of God. And if God, judgment starts in the house of God and God will administer the final judgment. Judgment starts in the house of God. And God will administer the final judgment for every one of us. Evil people are eager for rebellion, but they will be severely punished. Do you consider yourself an evil person today? And we would say no. By no means am I evil. I'm sweet, kind, innocent, cute, and loving. That's what we think. And boy, are we fooled. You're looking in the wrong mirror. <laughs> Jonah chapter 1, beginning with verse 1. It says, Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise and go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it. For their wickedness is come up before me. But, it's a bad but there, but Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. And he went down to Joppa, and he found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare thereof and went down into it to go with them unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. Now this story Anyone who's been in church or Sunday school any length of time, you know this story. You know all about it, and you can quote it. And the way you quote it is Jonah was swallowed by a whale. And then we know the whole story of Jonah. So today we're going to look at it, and we're talking about still attention-getting moments, special godly moments that come to our lives. They're special and they're godly. So don't forget it. They're special and they're godly. And their purpose is to get our attention. 
So as we think about that, we realize, first of all, that it says that the word of the Lord came to Jonah. God speaks. And when God speaks, we better listen. This is a very short book of the Bible. I think, what, four chapters? And in it, we find that God speaks seven different times does his word come forth. God speaking. Here it says, and the word of the Lord came unto Jonah. God speaks. Whether you believe that or not doesn't make any difference. God speaks. And he speaks in a voice that we can hear. Sometimes God speaks audibly, just like I'm doing. Sometimes God speaks silently to our spirit. But God speaks. And if you've never heard God, it's because you're not listening. Because he's, it can be somebody coming to you. It could be an event, but God speaks. And we need to learn to hear his voice. In chapter 2, it says, And the Lord spake unto the fish. God spoke to the fish. We've got an awesome God. He knows two languages. Never think about God speaking to a fish, do you? God controls everything. God can do anything. He spoke to a fish. In chapter 3, it says, And the word of the Lord came unto Jonah a second time. Now, that's bad. That's bad. Verse 3, So Jonah rose and went unto Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. He acknowledges that word. In chapter 4, it says, And then said the Lord. So you see, he continues to speak to them throughout this whole chapter. Verse 9, And God said to Jonah, And then said the Lord. Verse 10. So I want you to understand to begin with that God speaks to his children. And we've got to learn to hear it. He spoke here seven times in these four chapters. God's word came forth. The whole Bible is the inspired word of God. The whole Bible is God speaking. And he spoke to Jonah. He spoke to the fish and told them something. He, just like he speaks to me and you. Why do you think when you're sitting here and you're in the back of the church or you're in the front of the church... And the Spirit of God tells you to go to the altar. You sit there and hold on to the pew. Who do you think is talking to you? You think that's the devil wanting you to go to the altar? What about when you're sitting back there and people are up here praying and God wants you to go pray with somebody? Where do you think that voice comes from? And why do you disobey it? Why is it when God tells us to turn right, we turn left? Why is it when God tells us to go to the hospital and visit somebody, we sit down in our recliner and watch TV? See, there's a lot of questions in our lives that we can ask. And the answer is simply because of rebellion. And we're going to look at that and we're going to try to understand it. Seven here, it represents, of course, perfection, but totality in this case seven times is total in this one event seven times God had to speak and we're so grateful that he did when God speaks to us he wants us to hear it with our heart see when God you're sitting there and God tells you to go to front and you don't do it you're hearing God with your head. When God tells you to go pray with somebody and you don't, you hear it with your head. We can make all the excuses in the world for not doing what God says. But they're nothing more than excuses. As I read here to you this morning, he said, 
God will have the final judgment. The final judgment. Do you ever play with your kids and say, I love you? And they say back, I love you. Right, Brody? I love you. And you say back, no, I love you. And you say back, we're not getting out of here till you do this. <laughs> you don't ever say that. I know, but he don't ever say that. That's, that's a generic thing. We say, I love you. <coughs> Laying there in bed last night. I love you, Pa. I love you, Brody. And we want to see who's going to be the last one to say it. You ever play that game? And you say it three or four times, and then you say, I love you. And he heard it. And you turn sideways and say, he doesn't know that one. Of course, I don't know what that means either. <laughs> Carly, can you, I, I, what, what an ugly heart. I love, I love me. All right? You see, we, we want to be the last one. But God put it in his word and tells us, he said, that God will have the final judgment it won't be us in other words the last thing that we're going to think is what God tells us on the day of judgment not what we think we're not going to argue with him we're not going to tell him anything different God has the final judgment we have it now we decide whether or not we're going to do what we do in our life we decide whether or not we're going to hear God's voice we decide that we're the judge but God will have the final judgment. So we must be aware of this. When God's word is spoken, it's yea and amen. I want to I read you a verse of the Bible and show you something. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, it says, For all of God's promises have been fulfilled in Christ with a resounding yes. That's the yea, yes. And through Christ, our amen, which means yes, ascends to God for his glory. That's a bunch of good words. Let me tell you what it means. It says all of God's promises, every promise God makes, he shouts, God shouts out, with a resounding, that means a voice that's heard everywhere, all at once, with a resounding yes. So God says, my promises are yes. It's going to happen. And then we, because of Jesus Christ dying for us, we then shout, Amen which means yes. And that goes to the glory of God there in heaven. So God looks down and he looks at us and he says yes to all of his word. And when we're saved, we say amen, yes to your word. He says I am the word, we say I believe the word. So if that's true, why do we have attention-getting situations in our life? And it's a simple answer. It's because we get to places in our lives where we don't yell back yes. We're not in agreement with God's word because we have changed something. And we've got to see how God wants to do that in our lives. Everything in God's word represents his love for us. Those of you who have truly been loved by your parents, and you do something wrong, 
there is an attention getting moment. And those of you kids who rule the house, this doesn't apply to you because it never happens. But those of you who have parents that really and truly tried to raise your right, they disciplined you. That's why I got as tall as I did. And David, I've always been taller than him. And that's because mother and daddy wore me out. And I went up straight. David got his way. <laughs> and blame me for it. I'm the one that got it. But, but here's the thing. Did you ever have your parent look at you and say, this is going to hurt me more than it does you? And then we said, in that case, I love you, so don't do it. I don't want you hurt. Don't want you hurt. It's going to hurt me more than it does you. Do you understand that when God has to administer to us attention, getting moments, he's doing it out of love? And he is saying to us, this is going to hurt me more than it does you, because it didn't have to happen. It didn't have to happen. But because, see his word says, if you do this, so and so, but if you don't, and as long as we believe God's word, we're on that top if, but if you do this, smooth sailing. But if you don't, it's a sad situation whenever we don't enjoy God's love. He wants us to follow his promises because he says about them they are yea. In this story, to begin with, God wants our full attention. Our full attention. So, before I get into all this other stuff, and all it's good to have you in the service today. Good to have you here. Amen. God wants our full attention. Amen? Amen? God requires of us things that make us have to surrender to him. Amen? Well, that was low. What happened to that? God requires of us things that make us surrender to him. Amen? Amen, Amen means what? Yes. Yes. Amen means yes. I don't know how long ago it was, but a few years ago, God told me, he said, I want you to have Saturday night prayer. And my first reaction was, people don't want to come on a Saturday night. He told me again, I have it. I said, okay. So we, I announced it. We have Saturday night prayer. Anybody can come. You come in and find a place, you pray. We stay about 30 minutes, and then we all gather together and have a prayer for this church. We did that for a while and had good attendance, I thought. Not what I wanted, but what I thought. And then one day, God said to me, Danny, tell them this. If they'll come to Saturday night prayer, I will stop things from happening to them in the future. That's going to happen. But if they'll come here, I'll stop it. That sounds like a good deal. Um, yeah. So I told you all that. Do you understand that most of you in here didn't believe that? I, I told you a word that God gave me to give to you. I told you that word, but you didn't believe it. You didn't like it, so you changed it. I don't have to go. I can pray at home. See, you've changed what God said.
Now, I tell you that to set you up for what's fixing to happen here. There are life-changing moments that come into our lives that God brings to get our attention. So, to most of you, that didn't get your attention because you don't care. Whatever problems out there, I can get through it. God will help me. It doesn't matter what God says. You see, we're, we're too busy. We're too tired. We're too worried. We're going out to eat. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. The fact is, we get cold-hearted. And then we get distracted by the world... And the world's ways distract us from the word of God. God said, have Saturday night prayer. That means he wanted us to come. God said, see. So we deny it. We don't want it. And we have to try to figure out why. See, when God speaks to us, we got to not misunderstand it. We can't misinterpret it, and you cannot negotiate it. God's word is yea and amen. Yea means God saying, yes, my word is true, and our actions say, yes, I believe your word. Yes, my word is true. And we say by our actions, yes, I believe your word. We can't misunderstand it. He didn't say, if you want to, come. He didn't say, I might do something in your future. And say, he didn't say that. He said, I will. But we misunderstand that. We misinterpret that. You see? So we don't have to come. And that's, you know, that's between you and God. In this story, God tells Jonah, I want you to go east, and I want you to go there <laughs> to my people. God had heard the people of Nineveh. He saw their wickedness. He didn't want to kill them. He wanted to help them. When God tells us to come to Saturday night prayer and we don't do it, it hurts God. We ought to come to Sunday school. Because that is where we gather together in another situation and we talk about God's word. We're learning. You see, we, we make choices. We decide what we're going to do. He said, go east to Nineveh. I'm going to send you there to help them. Jonah didn't want to do it. He went west to Tarshish. God said, go east. He went west from the presence of the Lord. He thought he could get away from God. But you see, you can't do it. God is everywhere, and he's going to require of us all the things. Do you understand and we don't, myself included sometimes, do you understand the, what the privilege is to have a church? The privilege to be able to come here and not have somebody outside saying something or doing something or keeping us from coming? Do you even know what the privilege we have in having altars in this church? See, most of us don't even know that. They just would. I told the board years ago, I said, as long as I'm here, there'll be altars in this church. And I said, after I'm gone, you can do what you want to with them. And thank goodness, it's always been that way. The first altars that were ever built were for people to go and thank God for what he had done for them. Go back and look in your Bible. 
the first altars were just places to come and thank God. But we're past that now because the devil has convinced us the only reason we have altars is for if you're sick. So I'm not sick, so I'm not going. I'm not having a surgery, so I'm not going. I don't have cancer, I'm not going. My back's not hurting, I'm not going. See, we, we do all these crazy things when we ought to be coming up here just thanking God. I can thank God for my seat. Good. Why don't you do it? Because if you thank God, you'll get out from what you are and come and worship God just because you love him. But we're afraid of what people, if I go up there, they're going to think something's wrong with me. If I go up there, there's going to be 35 of them come and put their hands on me. Maybe you need 35 people to put their hands on you. Yeah? But no, we just sit back there in our seat. And we watch other people pray. Why in the world does he go to the altar? He goes to the altar every time he comes to church. Thank God he does. Because one time it may get through to him. Why did Naaman have to dip seven times in the river to get healed? It wasn't the healing that was holding him back. It was his obedience. It's going to take seven times to get his obedience. Once it got right, then God's going to bless him. How many times do you have to judge somebody because they're trying to get a hold of God and you think they're disrupting the service? God does things in a strange way. We better be very careful with it. They threw Jonah overboard. And then a big fish swallowed him. And he stayed there three days and three nights. God got Jonah's attention. He got his attention. What about me and you? What does it take? What's it take for God to get our attention? If I tell you that God says that if you'll come to prayer and give him a little bit of time, there are things he'll stop in your future from happening to you, bad things. What's it going to take for God to get your attention to believe that? I've had, we've had people come here that were facing bad situations in their life. And they came on Saturday night and prayed. As soon as the situation got handled, they never came back. If we're a Sunday school teacher... We want people to come to Sunday school. We want our class to be big. We want people to show they care. Well, don't you think the same thing happens about Saturday night prayer? And if what I'm saying about the prayer, that has nothing, that is not the sermon, but if what I'm saying about it bothers you, you probably need to come onto the altar right now and pray through. Saturday night prayer won't take you to heaven. But it may put you in a situation where God can speak to your heart. We better be careful. Is a disease what it's going to take for God to get your attention? Is a hospital visit what it's going to take? Is it the loss of a loved one? Is that what it's going to take to get your attention? Is your finances being ruined? Is that what it's going to take? For you to lose your best friend? Is that what it's going to take? See, God has all kind of ways and all kind of means to get our attention. If God got Jonah's attention with a, with a whale, with a fish, he can use anything to get ours. Anything. There's nothing off limits to God. Because he has a special plan. Special godly moments will come to us. And I don't care how old you are, you young people, you better believe that they're going to come to you. God's going to get your attention. 
You're going to know what you're doing is wrong. He's going to get your attention. But they're going to come to all of us. See, our actions and our words, they've got to match. They've got to match. It's got to be the same thing. He says, when, when the storm hit the boat, and they brought Jonah up, and the guys didn't, they couldn't understand what was wrong. They knew something was wrong. And they asked Jonah if he knew. Listen to his words. He said, I am a Hebrew, and I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, with his, which had made the sea and the dry land. I'm a Hebrew, a Jew, an Israelite, and I fear the Lord. I respect him. His word is truth. How many of us claim that we're Christians, but the life that we live is something else? Our words are ugly words. They're something else other than Christian words. Our actions, our deeds are something else. But we say we love the Lord. We tell people we're going to heaven. See, God said, Jonah, go east. He went west from the presence of the Lord. And when he got faced with reality, he said, I'm a Jew. What he was saying was, I know the word. And my responsibility is to be in awe of the word, to obey the word. I know the word is truth because he said yes. And I'm supposed to say yes back to him. But I can't say yes because I'm in disobedience. So just throw me overboard. Jonah knew he was wrong. He knew all the time he was wrong. But he never did anything until he got confronted with it. And God allowed a storm to come to get Jonah's attention. He wanted Jonah to know the power and the authority of God, to recognize it, to be able to say yes. And the only way he could do that was to bring some kind of calamity to his life to get his attention. It's not that God hated him. God loved him. God said east. He went west. God loves him. He wants to use him to bring the gospel to a nation of people that are rejecting God. But there was a problem in Jonah's heart. He didn't want to go there. He didn't want them to be saved because they were the enemies. And he didn't want the enemy to be saved. What is, what is our reason for disobeying God? Why do we go east when God tells us to go west? Why do we do that? I mean, what, we have to have a purpose for it. When God says, give me your life, surrender to me, why is it we don't do it? I mean, what's our purpose? Why is it when God tells you to come to the front and pray, you don't do it? Why is that? You ever, ever try to figure it out? Why do you do that? I'm embarrassed. I'm afraid. I don't think he'll do it. Why do you do that? When you know God's voice and God says, go to the choir, why do you not do it? It's not, it's not just, I'm not going. Why do you not do it? What's your purpose? So you, you have to figure these things out. And you can never come face to face with God until you figure out and tell the truth. John was in trouble, and he knew he was in trouble. But only when he got confronted with it. I'm a Jew, and I fear God. That means awe and respect. He was in the West when he should have been in the East. There's no respect there for God. You say you love the Lord. 
then why do you disobey his commandments? If you love him. You tell people you love God. So why do you disobey him? As leaders in the church, we should encourage everybody under our control to obey God. And the way you do that is you do it yourself and you set the example for them. Every deacon is a spiritual leader in the church. But does every deacon come to Saturday night prayer? No. Every board or steward member has been selected by this church to serve, to be examples. Do they all come? No. You see? Why not? And what's it going to take for God to get us to line up with his word? Why do we need to come to Saturday night prayer? One, because God said, have it. That's, why do we come to church? Two, it's because here we get away from the world. And we have a moment to be alone with God. Three, it's because God wants us to obey him. His will, not ours. God will send as many special occasions to our life as is necessary. I'm going to say it again. God will send as many special occasions or special moments to our lives as is necessary. Jonah got up on that ship and they asked him what was going on. He told them, I'm a Jew. I know the word. I respect God. I have disobeyed. Throw me overboard. At that moment, now listen to me. I'm going to close in just a minute. At that moment, Jonah was trying to commit suicide. He said, throw me over. That's certain death. Because he didn't believe there was any hope or any help for him. There are going to be these special occasions in our lives. These these tragedies where God's trying to get our attention. When it's going to get bad and we're going to think, I don't have any hope. I don't have any help. I think I'll just... Just throw me over. I'm not worthy. God's not listening. There's nothing I can do. Just throw me over. That was his first attention-getting moment. He hadn't repented. He didn't didn't ask God to stop it. He didn't say, he just said, throw me over. Get it over with. They threw him over, but they didn't throw him a life jacket. They didn't throw him a boat. They threw him over. Murder. Then God spoke to a big fish and said, Be there for him and swallow him. And the big fish did. Now we got Jonah in the belly of a big fish. That is is his second attention-getting thing. The storm didn't do it. Because you'll see he didn't repent. He didn't even try to talk to God. Just throw me over. It didn't work. So he sent the second one, a great fish. Now he's in the belly of a whale. Three days and three nights. God will send those things to our lives. And if one doesn't work, he'll send another. 
Now, he was in the belly of the whale three days, three nights. And then he prayed. Why was he in the belly of the whale three days and three nights? Why did Naaman have to dip in the river seven times? Why did the children of Israel have to march around Jericho seven times? Because God wanted to get their attention. Jonah could have repented and prayed the first night in that whale. But he still wasn't hearing God. Second night, he still wasn't hearing God. The third night, God got his attention. And you know the story. After he prayed, God told the fish to go up on the shore and throw him up, and he did. And God said, Jonah, go to Nineveh. And Jonah said, yes, Lord. What's it going to take for me and you to line up with God's word? How bad does it have to get? How many times did God have to bring things to our lives to get us to be what we should be for him? What's it take for us to say, yes, Lord? What's it going to take for you to come to Saturday night prayer? What's it going to take for you to get out of your seat and come to the altar and just give God thanks or to pray with somebody else? What's it going to take? Whatever it takes, God will do. You see, God has more special godly moments than we have the ability to reject. Our excuses will run out before God's moments will. You, you can't do that. So it's going to work. And the catch is, will we say yes now or later? Remember the old commercial on TV? You can pay me now or you can pay me later. But you're going to pay me. Pay me now let me change your oil. Or pay me after your car messes up. One may take $50. One may take 5000 See, what's it going to take for God to raise this church up? What's it going to take individually for you? God is waiting for you and I to be obedient to him. Jonah is our first example of special moments and how God uses them. Special, godly moments to get our attention. Father, you're an awesome God. And we know you love us. We know that. We know that you want us to be obedient even to the small things because if we're obedient to the small things then we have a better chance of being obedient to the large things. God, we don't ever know what's going to come before us. We don't ever know how you're going to use us or what you want us to do. But God, we've got to learn to hear your voice and we've got to learn to be willing to obey it. Little things. We've got to change our words that we say, things that we do. We've got to learn not to be afraid or ashamed to follow your instructions. We've got to learn how to go pray with other people and care. We've got to learn how to love. We think we do, but we don't. We've got to learn how to love. So, Father, we ask you this morning to forgive us of all the times that we've disobeyed you. All the times that we sat still when we should have gone. All the times that we were, just changed your word. You said do this and we went the other way. Forgive us for that because, Lord, you're going to be the last judge. And if we don't get it straight now, we're going to be confronted with it then. And we don't want that. So, Lord, help us to do it your way and to do it right. We love you. We thank you for loving us and caring for us. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen.